All right, everyone. Thank you for uh, tuning in to this week's market review. Um, some pretty interesting stuff going on here. Could be on the verge of a fairly big move lower, and I'll tell you why. So here's what we want to watch. S&P is at the bottom of its recent range. Apple has also found support at this level that was previously resistance. And a lot of times things find support at levels that have been resistance. And this happens because the people that sold when is at resistance come to regret their to come to regret their decision to do so when the price goes higher. And a lot of them tell themselves, if I can buy this back at the same price that I sold it at, I'm going to. So could get a little bit of a bounce, but I don't think that there's going to be too much follow through. So here's our S&P. You can see we're at the bottom of this recent range, right around the 468 level. As a matter of fact, we closed at 467.92. And the top of it has been around 477. So if this support breaks, next stop is probably going to be down around 460. And again, there was resistance. And sometimes levels that were resistance can convert into support. And it's not because of magic. Again, it's people sell tear. And then way over here, the price goes higher, and some of the people who sold tell themselves, ah, I made a mistake. I need to buy my shares back if I can get them at the same price I sold them at. So you get remorseful sellers placing buy orders over here that could turn the level from resistance to support. At that point, we probably have a pretty tradable bounce. But because some of the, uh, the sentiment numbers were so excessively bullish, uh, last month it just seems to me like if there's any kind of a catalyst that brings sellers into the market those sellers are going to have a hard time finding buyers now here's our bond etf that I, I like to watch and as we can see we failed that resistance okay this is actually the inverse of the of the of the interest rates but anyway the bonds got up here and now we're starting to go lower which means interest rates will go higher now, how does that happen? Well, you have people who bought back here who regret their decision to buy when the price goes lower, and they tell themselves, if it gets back to my price, I'm going to sell. So I can get out of break even, because people don't like to lose money. So they say, all right, if it gets back to my level, I'll get out of break even. Now, what happens sometimes is some of the traders who want to sell notice there are other sellers coming into the market. That's why we're not going any higher. And they start to get nervous, and they start to undercut each other, because the buyers are going to go as ever well and sell the lowest price. So they start to undercut each other, and that causes a snowball effect. So if this keeps going lower, that's going to push interest rates higher, and that will be probably bearish for most of the market. Here's our tech sector uh, spider, right? We support down here around 182.30. See, there was support. Now, how is it that a level that was support can become support again? Well, this is because of seller's remorse, but it's manifesting itself in a different way. We have people who sold here who regret their decision when it goes higher, and they say, hey, if it gets back to my level, I'm going to buy back. So seller's remorse can keep support intact for an extended period of time. And this is what I mean about Apple. Right, see where it found resistance, and you can see that here. Resistance here converted to support over here, so resistance here might convert to support where we are now. Considering how much this has been being up and how far down it is, it wouldn't surprise me to see some type of a bounce here. I mean, markets don't go up or down forever; they go in like staircases. And you can see here why would resistance stay intact? Well, remember, support stays intact because of sellers' remorse. Resistance can stay intact because of buyer's remorse. There's people who bought here who, when it finally gets back up to their level and they can bail out and break even, they do so. And then you get the snowball effect. The sellers notice other sellers lurking around and they start to undercut each other, and that's what happens. All right? So what's pretty interesting is if you just look at how precise these levels are. I mean, I marked this out 180, 130, probably, gosh, I don't even know couple weeks ago and I wasn't doing anything secret or anything like that I just went to where the opening price was here and look at that we got to within pennies like literally what is that 17 cents away of a hundred eighty one dollar stock knowing where these price levels are it's like knowing it's like having a map right because when we get to these important price levels we tend to make moves 
we don't get to important price level and tend to stay there for too long. All right, now here's something else to watch. Healthcare got really jacked up here. And some of the things that are in the healthcare sector, some of the industries that are responsible for this price move are overbought and overstretched. So if over the next couple of days, Apple breaks that support level and healthcare reverses, then we're probably gonna see a pretty meaningful move lower. All right, but we gotta let the market tell us what to do. So here's two things to watch. Healthcare, if it reverses, Apple, if it breaks that support, that's going to be a catalyst for a big move lower in the broader markets. So now if we look at some of these industries, here's our biotech. Notice how this appears to be reversing at a level that had been resistance before. And you can't see it on this chart, but it was also resistance back here, I think in like maybe February. So clear resistance stays intact. Sellers start to get worried. Someone's going to undercut them, so they reduce their prices, and it starts this snowball effect. Here's our pharmaceuticals industry. Remember, the S&P has thir uh, 11 sectors, and within the sectors, there are various industries. And here we see resistance became support. <clears throat> now, support might become resistance. Markets that get to resistance that are overbought tend to roll over. Overbought conditions mean that there will be traders who are expecting a reversion to the mean. And they're going to come into the market as sellers, and they could put pressure on it, and they could reverse it. So you get this double whammy of we're getting to a level where there's going to be some sell interest, and we're also getting conditions that are going to draw some traders into the market because they're expecting a reversion. A lot of trading strategies and styles are built upon this concept of reversion. Financial sector, this has been kind of sitting here, clear support, see resistance here, became support here. So we just got to keep an eye on this. It, This looks like it's a bigger move than it really is. It's only 75 cents. But if this starts to roll over too and this support gets taken out, then with Apple and healthcare, things are kind of like lining up. All the stars are going to be coming together for a big move lower. This is the capital markets industry, and this was a big part of why the financials moved up. But as we can see, this industry has reversed and now is testing the support. And we're trading right above a gap. We tend to get big move, fast moves through gaps. See, if we gap one way and we make a fast move like this and then we gap, there's not a lot of trading that goes on here. So what's one of the main reasons why we get support is because you get remorseful sellers trying to buy their shares back. But if it doesn't trade there, or if it only trades there for a short period of time, there's not going to be a lot of people who sold who are going to be trying to buy back now. So this could come right back in. If you make fast moves or gap going one way and then eventually turn around, uh, and come back the other way and get back to those same levels coming the other way, you tend to make fast moves back through. You can see that on a lot of charts. You can even see down here, fast move, fast move. Consumer discretionary, really not much to say here other than it reversed and is trending lower. Communication services, same story, reversed and trending lower. Look at this example though here. This is, this is a perfect example of why it pays to know where these price levels are. Say this thing was coming in and you were thinking, gee, where should I buy? Where should I buy? Where should I buy? Oh, getting close to a level that was resistance. I think there's a good chance there's going to be <laughs> support there. Say someone just said randomly, I'll buy it if it gets to 68. They didn't know that this was here. Well, guess what? They missed it. And they missed a nice profit. They were right about wanting to buy it, but they missed it because they didn't let the market tell them what to do. They just guessed that it would get to 68. Had they looked back at the former resistance level, they would have said, you know, there's a good chance that there's support at that level because it had been resistance. Big part of that sector is Google. Google gets called big tech, but it's really in the communication services sector. And we can see here, it got to resistance, level that was resistance before, and sellers start to undercut each other. 
The vast majority of moves in markets are based on short-term psychology. It has nothing to do with what they're talking about or attributing it to on the news. As a matter of fact, I tell my students, don't even bother watching the financial news because it's just so full of misinformation. Uh, industrials rolling over. Now, one of the things that was driving industrials is this aerospace and defense industry, which is in the industrial sector. And look what happened. We got to resistance at the precise level that we were at in June of 22. So 18 months ago, and this is where we find resistance to like within literally within pennies. So it's pretty amazing. This is an example of what we call market memory. That means a price level that's important can retain its importance for a long time. As we could see here. Actually, you know what? I'm, this is this is actually a, a misprint. I am sorry about that. This should be 621. Okay, yeah, I knew something didn't look right there. So that makes it even more profound. Okay, <laughs> that makes it even more profound because now instead of a year and a half, it's two and a half years. Um, let's see if I could make that 621. All right, sorry about that. Anyway, market memory. Things can stay intact for a long time. And consumer staples making a little move higher. Sometimes money flows into this sector before markets tend to go lower. It's what we call the old flight to safety. Money's coming out of like the big tech names. Where is it going? Well, the perception is consumer staple stocks are safer so the money flows into there energy we well, can see right even though this basically follows oil the same principles show up on charts of different securities why because what we're looking at is psychology and whether you're an oil trader or a crypto trader or a bond trader or a stock trader you experience the same emotions so people buy here and then when they go underwater and here too, support and support. A lot of them say, oh, I made a mistake. If this gets back to my level, I'm out. So if you get enough remorseful buyers placed in sell orders at the level that had been support, it can become resistance. Utilities, again, utility stocks, right? What was resistance converted into support? Going kind of sideways there, though. This looks kind of interesting, this material sector. It's one of the smallest sectors in the market. It's only about 2.5%, but it doesn't mean you can't find good trading ideas in it here. And again, what happened? We got to a former resistance level, and we're reversing off of it. So that means within this sector, there's probably some pretty interesting ideas, and you're going to be able to get much better premiums, or much lower premiums, I should say, on options of material stocks than on options of things like Tesla and NVIDIA. Real estate is reversing, but you can see the same principles, right? Support becomes resistance, resistance becomes support. So this gets down to about 37.80 and down another dollar and a half or so. I'd be looking here within this sector for some bounces. So you get some long ideas in the real estate sector, some short ideas in the Staples sector. I mean, sorry, the material sector. All right, and I don't know why. I just thought I would feature the USS Constitution this week. Never been there, but I will go one day. There's a little bit of a story about it. All right. All right, everyone, thank you so much. These are just some principles I talked about in the market. Here are some more that you can print out and check out. All right. Thanks a lot, everybody. I'll see you next week.